Hi guys. <laughs> Happy Sunday with Satan. And what do you know, we get today the Devil card from the True Heart um, Intuitive Tarot Guidebook and Deck. So, look at that. Beautiful. It reminds me of the Dark Lord from Sabrina. And speaking of Sabrina, wow! I am seeing so many people upset over the portrayal of Hecate in the show. I mean, okay. They, yeah, it's movie magic, so that's the number one thing that people have to understand. Nobody understands that it's movie magic. Just because, you know, and yes, Hecate is supposed to be the goddess of the witches. Everything that they said about her was true. You can go back and you can find this all in history. All kinds of history books, you gotta do your research, guys. So yeah, definitely. The Children of Cain, Michael Howard, definitely. There are so many different references to Hecate or Hecate or Hecata or Hecate. Don't even know how that. Yeah, where did Hecate come from? But anyways, yeah, it's it's beautiful. The statue was perfect. It was beautiful. That little ceremony that they did, it was beautiful. I mean, it was really beautiful. It was powerful. So it kind of gave it. You know, if if I were a uh, a god or a goddess, I would be impressed. I mean, I would be impressed with that setup, you know. But it, are they really honoring her? I mean, in the role? I mean, when they think like an actor and they really put themselves in that role, I think they are. So people are just, I mean, they're taking it to extremes. Like the satanic whatever did with the Baphomet statue. Now it is the people of Hecate that are going crazy. And it's just, it's, it's nothing to get butthurt about. So, it really isn't. But, you know. Yeah, people are going to get butthurt anyway, so it doesn't matter really. So, I just thought it was perfect. I thought it was a really good portrayal of her. Um, yeah, it was. So, that's just my opinion, though. But too many people are, yeah, I see way too much. When I got up this morning, I looked at my Twitter feed, and then Facebook, I was like, oh, God, here it goes, here it comes. It's, it's Pandora's box, literally, no pun intended. All right, so with the devil card, we have um, the high vibe is release, awareness, liberation, choice, and sexuality. On a low vibe, we have ego, addiction, lust, core, uh, codependency, temptation, illusion, weakness, debauchery. Ooh, check out my public page, Orion Debauchery, Espic. Uh, delusion and materialism. So, the devil is signifi signifies our internal struggles with external temptations and the choices we have in the matter. A goat-faced man appears on a bright blue day. Um, he lords over a dark space filled with the um, earthy, earthly remains of humanity, symbolizing a loss of, of spiritual connection. Now, in the foreground, Neil, the lovers, a direct link to the sixth card of the tarot, um, where once they had true love, now the innocence of their union is lost. They left the garden, indulged in some vices, and picked up uh, a few new habits. Chains bond the pair together, keeping them codependent and attached to their addictions. So they must examine what's working and what's lowering their vibe before they're kicking out of, before they're kicked out of paradise again. So definitely need a second chance. Ooh. All right. Now in wait. Oh, facing wait. Facing things we've chained ourselves to, some of which are uh, dragging us down, is never easy. But is strongly advised. If you pull the devil card, take it as a sign. You're playing with fire. Instead of getting Judeo-Christian Judeo uptight and freaked out about the card's imagery and name, um, in its high vibe, the devil card's energy is more like Pen, the sexy, drunken party god. There we go. Um, an internal awakening and or a pull toward uh, societal, 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 taboos, sexual or otherwise, means an intoxicating, debauched devil of a good time can be had, but only as long as no one gets hurt. <laughs> now, um, at its gentlest, and let's face it, it's a pretty rough card, the devil represents the need to remove your rose-tinted shades and examine patterns of destructive behavior and questionable motivations. The devil is a sign that your lower vibration self the shadow self is more in control than the uh, than has proven useful. So there's no use trying to banish the lower self, but you want it to lessen in control, or at least I do. The chains that bind you to bad uh, behaviors and your bondage to negative thinking 
can be undone only by acknowledging your own complicity. So, yeah, very true. So the vibe of the people surrounding you is important, and the devil card may be telling you to let go of frenemies who don't have your best interests at heart, as well as any toxic dynamics. And I've, I've really seen that happening. All the negative people are falling away. The garbage is taking itself out on my public page and on my YouTube page. So perhaps you're involved with a partner who isn't good for you or you're taking too many drugs. I hope you guys aren't. Please don't. Binge eating or stuck in vitamin men or victim mentality. If you're feeling trapped in a dead-end situation, the devil card says break the chains. Notice that the shackles binding the lovers on this card are not so tight that either a party couldn't shrug them off and walk away. It's okay to ask for outside help if you feel it's out of control. So that's really good. I like this. Now, in relationship dynamics, you may be feeling a sexual liberation or a strong pull toward a sexy, charismatic new person. Ooh, kind of, yeah. May have you in a fever state. Check in if, you're ba if you've been distracting yourself rather than dealing with painful emotions. Communicate needs truthfully and get all the details out before committing your, your heart. If you're ignoring any bad vibes they're giving off, the devil can be assigned to look closer. Some lesion, lesions, lesions enlighten, and some leave us uh, teetering on the abyss of a spiritual void. <laughs> Synchronicities, yeah, it's Easter eggs. For some, addressing issues of codependency, sexual dysfunction, or repression will lift dynamics to a healthy place. Others need to make sure that they are on the same emotional page as their partner. Some, or someone, may have stronger attachments. Now, in professional life, the devil can indicate things may not be what they seem. Um, offers that sound too good to be true probably are, so subterfuge can be afoot. So keep your eyes open. Some people may be in wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah, a lot of people have shown that to me. Yeah, yeah, this last year. Well, just these last few days and, uh, you know, coming into 2021. So, um, the temptation to take shortcuts or credit for others' efforts uh, indicates low self-worth and a need to refocus and appreciate your own talents and gifts. The choices you make define your personal morals and code of ethics. Ask your f uh, ask your amb if your ambitions and actions are in alignment with your higher self. That is a really interesting card. I mean, it does give it, it has a really good high vibe, but then it has a really low low vibe. So it's kind of like mania in a way. Uh, really high vibe. We have pan, uh, ecstatic madness, going crazy, insane, and then we have the low depressed state where we're just sunken and we're lower and lower and lower. Yeah. All right, if pulled in low vibe, beware of the seven deadly sins when the devil card is pulled. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Do you recognize yourself carrying this energy? Yeah, I do. Too much food. Everything we're attracted to may be not good for may not be good for us. If you're aware of your own negative behavior and continue and choose to continue, you may attract situations that put you in dicey spots, emotional or otherwise. Your daily habits and associations may be holding you back from moving into your life you want. Depression, anxiety, and fear can leave you vulnerable and paralyzed in a victim space, blaming others. Mentally numbing out the mind you can lead, can lead you to um, unsavory um, interactions. Let go of the pacifiers, anchoring you to old pragmas, and put your higher self first. So... Now, okay, now this is her excerpt, and I love these. All right, now, she says, Not long after I moved to L.A., I fell head over heels in love with a beautifully stunning man who had gold dust in his shoes. Ooh, really? And big fame in his future. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. The actor, a man slash boy with the perfect 90s hair, <laughs> had a brilliant um, a million watt smile that uh, shown to sun and back, to the sun and back. Um, it was love at first sight for both of us, by both accounts. Weird and silly, here was a goofball to match my own out-of-step rhythm. It seemed destined to be great, the greatest love of all, until it wasn't. Um, he was the epicenter of his social group, 
with everything on his terms. I found this often to be the way with those near stardom. We, uh, we were the cast together in a TV movie, and he didn't seem thrilled, which should have been a red flag. He ignored me the whole shoot, instead flirting with the customer, who laughed when I mentioned that we'd been dating for months. My personality disappeared around him. I was fearful. I'd say something, wait, something that would send him into the arms of the many B-level actresses lounging in the wings in his bedroom on the nights he didn't see me. So, where'd I go? I wanted him to love me as desperately, as desperately as I loved him. I got smarter, or I got smaller and lower in my vibe and energy as he became more distant. Despite the dist distance, despite it all, there was intense passion and magic in our connection. When it ended due to his cheating, he offered his friendship in earnest. But I was broken, consumed with myself, and spinning in an ocean of emotional pain. Oh, the depth of which I'd never encountered before. Worst of all, my underlying rage, raging, abandonment issues had been triggered. I can understand that. A few months later, I accidentally, on purpose, <laughs> I love that, I do accidentally on purposes all the time, ran into him at a Valentine's Day house party. His crowd was with him, and memories of past Snickers uh, had me spinning. I was head over my ego in my heels, uh, in a panicky state, and blaming the actor for everything, with no ownership of my part. It, had, uh, or it hadn't occurred to me to ask myself why I'd never stayed in a situation where my needs weren't being met. At one point, I found myself alone without, outside with him. As he talked, I dwelt on how every person at the party he knew, he cheated on me. Surreally, oh my god. He was mid-story offering up a not remotely humble brag about fooling people into thinking he was a member of the rock band really rem and then being rewarded for his lie with vip treatment including a hotel hookup in vegas that's terrible he's just as much as a liar as ever i remember thinking bitterly he was saying something like so then we're given a suit a suite at the hard rock when everything went white and hazy and i just shocked or, and i just socked him oh yes the first and thankfully the last time in my adulthood. <laughs> I hate a human in anger. It's a horrible, terrible, no good thing to do. And it's something I must always regret. How I handled my emotions in this situation was unacceptable and frightening to me, as well as to him. Well, at least you taught him a little lesson there. Uh, though, clearly, I wanted him to feel some kind of pain he'd caused me. This was not my lesson to teach, and certainly not in this manner. Um, it was an eruption that eventually brought to, uh, brought to light for me how I mimicked my father's behavior and used a shield of anger uh, to not feel emotions and distance myself from people. Gotcha. Even more necessary to understand, I was chained to a pattern of thought that was no longer serving me well. My father problem solved my having tantrums by having tantrums and breaking things. He loved, including the people. And like my father, I'd hurt a person I had once loved very much. My pain had brought out the devil in me. Ooh, that rings true. That night, I couldn't stop thinking about my un uh, my upbringing. Growing up in an environment where I had to uh, vie for attention uh, had made love feel conditional, so I'd always assumed that a man fell out of infatuation with me. The mission was to convince him to change his mind. To uh, reignite the or to yeah reignite that attention, um, I'd taken the sights and the subtle uh, disinterested challenges rather than the passive aggressive signs that it was time to move on. I'd always assumed a guy would just end things with me clearly, cleanly, rather than torture me until doing it harm doing it for him. The terrible way I handled this breakup forced tremendous epiphanies. I asked a happily married couple, a friend of mine, to lunch one day, hoping to find out her secret. She had had several successful relationships with men who adore her, and before they settled, or before she settled down, um, quote, "It's incredibly simple, really," she said. "I only date men who are a hundred percent into me." 
how do you know that they're all that way into you? I said, I did a guy once who was amazing the first few weeks. Then he started only making last second plans. We'd be out to dinner and he'd flirt with other girls right in front of me. I would have smacked him, I said. Yes, all of Hollywood knows you would have smacked him. <laughs> Go, Rachel. I threw a uh, breadstick at her. <laughs> did you? Who, who threw the breadstick? I want to know. <laughs> at first I thought he was making me feel small and low. But then I realized it was me. It was my choice to be with him. I vowed never to put myself in that position again and broke up with him easily. I love the breadstick. I love it. I think that's incredible. But you guys know me in my dark, sick, yeah, frying pan. Not long after the end of our relationship, a pal told me a friend of hers had gone on a date with the actor and was turned off because there was... Too many drawings of a black girl called Rachel around his apartment. Muse energy, I'll take it. Oh my god. A year or so later, um, I ran into the actor at a film premiere and immediately apologized for my trespasses. He was slightly tipsy, friendly, and as charming as ever. He told me he had just... Wait, where'd I go? He told me he had really loved me and he was sorry for how he had treated me. Just then, Winona Ryder walked over and told me I was pretty. It felt like closure, and at that moment, all was right in the world. You are gorgeous. Even if you don't see it, we don't see our own beauty. It's really hard for all of us, because we're our own uh, worst enemies. We're our own critics, and, and you're beautiful. But, um, uh, for one, I applaud you for punching him. Um, I, I applaud, the I think, the lady, the other lady, your friend, for throwing a breadstick. Um, but then again, you know, I, I do understand, you know, feeling, you know, remorse for what you did. Because we're human. We do feel remorse. That is incredible. That is, that is a really incredible story. So, this, I mean, this is just really amazing. Your stories are really helping me. An advanced tarot reader get more advanced. So, I don't know how, how high we can go with reading the cards. What a perfect card, though. What a perfect card for today. Didn't even realize this is the card for today, so. But yeah, we can see that the chains, they're not too loose. So. But yeah, I see Pan, I see Baphomet, um, I see a bunch of different, you know, um, different gods in that. I see, uh, I see Pan, um, uh, 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 Carnunius, Carnunus. Um, we have Baphomet, we have, uh, Old Horny. Uh, yeah, so we have, you know, traditional. This is like a traditional witchcraft looking card to me. So I can really, you know, res it resonates with me really well. But I, I love that. I really do love that. So in the conjunction with this card and this whole craziness about, you know, Hecate and Sabrina or Hecate or Hecate, whatever you want to call her. Um, I've been honoring her for 27 years now on the first of this month. So two days ago, I've been honoring her for 27 years. That's almost my entire life. Almost. I think anybody would be very pleased to see what beauty they have brought to an entity, to a deity like that. I mean, yeah, you know, the Divine Feminine. She is. She's the Divine Feminine, and she will wipe you out if you, you know, if you're mean to her children. Watch out. Just like with, you know, um, La Santísima Muerte, with Lilith. And, you know, then the whole Lilith thing got brought up, and I'm not even going to go into that. But, yeah, I, I would take it, you know, if it were me and I were Hecate, which I'm not, and which will never happen. So I can't speak on her behalf, but I can speak on my behalf. I would look down and kind of see, oh, huh, that's nice, that's cute, that what they're doing. So, yeah, I mean, the moment in the moment when they're doing these things, they really get into those roles. So, it'd be a little less uh, cynical and harsh and critical, people. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, they did that, and I love it. I really do love it. Very sad, though. Very sad. So, I'm not going to torture myself again. Actually, I will. So tonight again, I'm going to binge watch it. So, alright, guys. Well, that's it for today. So, I hope you guys have a great Sunday with Satan. And I love you guys very much. With all of my heart. All the way from Venus. All the way back down. And I will see you all tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, definitely. So, 
I love you guys. And yeah, what did you guys think about the whole Sabrina thing? Let me know below in the comments. And I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.